This video has been sponsored by Whatnot. More on them at the end of the video. What if you were a Pokemon gym leader? What if you lived in the world of Pokemon and were recognized for your battling skills and you've been promoted this time to become a water type Pokemon gym leader? Perhaps you're taking over a pre-existing gym that was water type or a different gym of a different type or maybe you're building one of your own in the many cities and towns of Pokemon. You're following in the footsteps of some of the greatest though. You've got Misty, Wallace, Wan, you've got Crash Awake, Marlon, you've got Nessa. These gym leaders show the perfect mixture of beauty and power when it comes to the ferocious water type Pokemon. And water type Pokemon are the most common on the planet, so you've got plenty to choose from when it comes to constructing a gym with your own theme and identity, your own gym badge, your team, the trainers that would be there, and what you want to do. And the theme of my overall gym is going to be the Monsters of the Deep. I'm going to take us to the Kanto region, but I am not going to be taking over the Cerulean gym. No, no, we'll leave Misty B, although at this point she's probably been promoted and moved on because we are in a future Kanto, and the future Kanto from the regular Kanto has changed. We saw it in Gold and Silver version. Janine has taken over the Future City Gym from Koga, Blue has taken over the Viridian City Gym from Giovanni, and as for the Cinnabar Island Gym, well, there isn't really so much of a gym standing anymore, so much as Blaine just kind of runs his challenge from a cave. Instead, the actual island itself, which is going to need to be rebuilt in this kind of future canto I'm imagining, was previously destroyed by an erupting volcano. I wonder what happened. I wonder if there's any kind of ruins or relics under the sea of the Cinnabar Island of ages past. Now, a future Cinnabar Island that I'm imagining is a little bit of a tourist spot. Like, it's kind of like, a, oh, did you hear a powerful Pokemon was created in the mansion here? Or perhaps people used to restore Pokemon fossils here. There used to be a gym. Now it's a little bit more of a kind of tourist town with no official Pokemon gym, so to speak, anymore. But there is a gym being reconstructed nearby. And you'll find out soon enough. There is a kind of mysterious tourist guide who, who will take you upon his ship and show you around. He's like, hey, let me show you the north of the orange islands and the seafoam islands let's you know you can go on a full tour but be warned because there's many powerful creatures that lurk in the dip they lurk in the dip <laughs> They lurk in the deep around Cinnabar Islands, and something's just like not quite right about this kind of boat guy. I just like imagine like a really kooky, like Mr. Briny type. And you get on this boat, and yeah, you go out and you see the sights, you have a lovely day, and then at the very end, and they, they argue, by the way, in order to even get on this boat, you have to be able to beat them in a Pokemon battle, so it's for high level Pokemon trainers already. They're gonna be throwing at you some of like the Kanto go to water Pokemon, whether that's like Tentacruel, Golduck, Starmie, Sea King, you know, all of the usual classes. And while out at sea, something wild happens. The rain starts chucking it down as if Kyogre's out there somewhere in the world causing havoc. And there's clouds, storm clouds in the sky circling round the sound of thunder. But you realize that those storm clouds aren't ordinary storm clouds. These waves aren't normal waves rocking the boat. You look over the deck and there in the distance you see the eyes of a giant Pokemon. It is in fact a Gigantamax Blastoise and this is the opening trial to my gym. You must be able to defeat this one Gigantamax Blastoise but not in a conventional battle, instead in a more Legend of Zelda style, kind of like the, the Varuta battle um, where you're like circling around it and it's going to be using its G-Max Cannonade to fire at you. You are going to need to take a Pokemon that can at least no surf and and dive to be able to like take on this Pokemon, dodge its attacks, and this will all be explained to you before you even get on the boat. Like you need a Pokemon with surf or dive in case you go overboard. So you have a Pokemon like that on your team and you're able to kind of skirt around it and rally attacks back at it. Now it's a Gigantabax Pokemon, so you don't actually need to defeat it. And I think it would be impossible to do so, but you do need to be able to survive it for at least kind of as long as it takes for the Gigantamax to dissipate. And when it does, after you've circled round it and round it, like it's a great Octo from Zelda again. Um, the compression of this, this giant Pokemon sinking down causes a whirlpool that sends you diving under the sea. And like I say, don't worry, you've got a Pokemon with dive on your team. And you got like one of those little like Qui-Gon Jin like mouthpieces from the Phantom Menace. They're in Pokemon. I don't know why I'm referencing the Phantom Menace. So now you are exploring the great underwater routes that connect to the kind of Cinnabar Island area and the Seafoam Islands area. And of course, there are even wild Pokemon that exist down here that you can battle as well as various other divers who say that they are part of the new gym challenge that's setting up on Cinnabar Island. This is the secret eighth gym leader of the Kanto region. 
The Pokemon seem more ferocious underwater, though, than they do above water. You've now got some of the big crustaceans, like Kingala, and you've got G Cloyster and Blastoise. You've got Kabutops as well, which is kind of a little throwback to the time before when Cinnabar Island was restoring fossil Pokemon. So lots of more Kanto classic powerful Pokemon, but also some Pokemon that you wouldn't normally see being used by these trainers, like Don Dozo, or perhaps like Wishcash. Also, one of the limitations of this Pokemon gym is that you're only able to use Pokemon that you could typically send out underwater. It's just one of the things that makes this gym a little bit more challenging. Therefore, when you go underwater, there'll be like a little text screen pop up that just says that all of your non underwater Pokemon are returned to your boxes, giving you room to add to your team some of the Pokemon that you encounter down there. Perhaps like like I mentioned before, Dondozo or Wishcash, maybe a Lantern to give you some level of type advantage somewhere along the lines, or perhaps even some wishy-washy. There's all sorts of strange Pokemon underwater in the Kanto region, and it's in the future, so Pokemon have migrated in. But where things really start heating up is when you follow those underwater paths and you find yourself in the underwater ruins of old Cinnabar Islands. The remains of what looks like the Pokemon Gym and the Pokemon Mansion and the, the, the Pokemon, the Pokemon Center, the, the Science Lab, all of those elements, those buildings have been effectively broken off of the mainland of Cinnabar Island when the volcano erupted. This is why they're not really there in Gold Silver and in Hot Gold Soul Silver, because they actually just broke off when the volcano erupted, and now their ruins are deep underground, and you get to navigate this whole underwater ruin area. Battling your way through powerful Pokemon divers as well as like just underwater monsters. And in the ruins of the old Pokemon mansion, you can still use the Rhydon statues to use the door trick to change the water levels in that area. Though I'm not 100% sure quite how that would work, but I just like the idea of it. It's again like, oh, the Legend of Zelda and the water dungeon controlling the levels of water. And at the very end, you find a kind of glass containment. Now, this, of course, was a glass container that Mewtwo was once in, but it looks like it's been like re-outfitted and it's been freshened up kind of like it looks in let's go and what it is when you get inside is actually a decompression chamber suddenly all of the water filters out and you are just inside this glass chamber that has air in it breathable air once again and the glass chamber rotates round into a new room a new cavern that's been constructed as the new secret eighth pokemon gym Inside is the gym stadium, and of course, the water keeper, Toby. I stand there with a lure ball in my hand, saying, ah, I've lured you into my trap. I've caught you on my fishing line. Welcome, trainer, to the eighth and final secret gym of the Kanto region. I say, perhaps you came to Cinnabar Island looking for the gym leader that came before me. But don't worry about Blaine, I've hung him out to dry. Now the water Pokemon rule once again. The water and the sea has reconsumed Cinnabar Island. And rumors of this gym have clearly bought the likes of you here. Other powerful Pokemon trainers have been visiting and we've even been recognized by the Pokemon League. So welcome and prepare to face the monsters of the deep. And in this underwater cavern, there is, of course, this giant pool that opens up as the battle begins. My first Pokemon out, of course, is going to be Omastar, a nice throwback to the times when Cinnabar Island was here. This Omastar knows Surf, Rain Dance, Ancient Power, and Earth Power, so it's got a kind of elements of the fossil, but also it can set up rain in this underwater cavern to allow for my other water Pokemon to become boosted and more powerful. I think also knowing Earth Power gives us just like a little something-something to deal with your electric-type Pokemon that you might have bought. Depending on which ones you could have bought through the underwater, I don't know, you'd need to go through a whole list of Pokemon and decide which non-water Pokemon could, could swim and dive. But you could take on an Omastar, no bother, it was merely set up for, of course, the next monster of the deep, Gyarados. Which, by the way, has Hurricane as its ace move, a flying-type powerful move that is definitely going to hit you in the rain. It also has Surf, Ice Fang, and, of course, Earthquake, again, to deal with any electric Pokemon that you bought, but if you do hit it with an electric-type move, then, yeah, Gyarados is probably going down, because it's got that quad weakness. Gutting. The third of my six Pokemon out is Tentacruel, and you can imagine the stories they tell across the sea of this Tentacruel pulling ships deep into the 
ocean, never to be seen again. It knows Surf, just like the other Pokemon, of course. As well as Sludge Wave to get that Stab, Poison, Supersonic to confuse you, and Hex to deal additional damage once you've hit a status condition. You beat it, and I pop up and say, ha, huh, I see you are well versed in the monsters of the Kanto region, but the sea is one giant region, and Pokemon migrate from everywhere abroad. And I send out Basque Legion, the Husuian Basque Legion, of course. A sinister water Pokemon that provides a little different element with that ghost typing. This one knows Surf, Wave Crash, Aqua Jet, and Phantom Force. Very nice. Very nice, I think, though, because you, even if it'll take out a Pokemon or two of yours, you can beat a Basque Legion. So I'll send out the mighty Sharpedo that terrorizes seas all across the Pokemon world. If I had Mega Evolution on my team, I would probably Mega Evolve it, but I won't because I've already trialed you with a Gigantamax Pokemon and I have a Terrastal Pokemon coming after this. But it's still gonna come at you with those sharp teeth with both Ice Fang and Crunch. It also knows Surf and Liquidation. And of course they all know Surf, I just think that's like gonna be the recurring move for this gym. And it makes sense when you see my Terrastal Pokemon. You've beaten my first five and I come out and I say, huh, there was an original monster that lived down here in the deep long before I even came. Its statues heralded the Cinnabar Island. They say it used to swim in magma, but now it swims in the oceans. Go right on. And I know it's a sixth Pokemon gym and we're using right on, not Rhyperia, but first of all, Rhydon looks cooler. Second of all, it's just way more in theme with the Cinnabar Mansion and the Rhydon statues that are everywhere. You can give it an Eviolite to power it up, but the reason I've chosen Rhydon is it is the classic monster. It's like the first, first Pokemon, although I did a whole video on that. It's the first Pokemon, and but also on top of that, it's very Godzilla-esque. It is a monster of the deep, and famously in the anime is known for using Surf, which is why I'm going to terrestrialize it into a water-type Rhydon, and with that Eviolite, it is buffed out. It also knows Rain Dance and Surf, but on top of that it has Earthquake and Stone Edge for additional different stab damage, and it also means it's just perfect because it's not going down to electric Pokemon anymore. Of course, the one thing I didn't consider is that you would be able to bring a Grass Pokemon underwater. I don't know how many Grass Pokemon can go underwater, but if there is one, you've got it, and Rhydon is going down. Ah! Unbelievable. I constructed this mighty underwater gym to terrorize those above that they might go back and tell stories of this gym. But you have defeated me. Don't tell anyone that I lost here today. Here, take this. And I hand on over the TM for Wave Crash and the Dip Badge. What an incredible Pokemon trainer you are. I'm sure you'd be ready to take on some of the other Pokemon gyms that I've made. You know, deep underwater gyms like this and beautiful gym badges, they're not easy to make. So I'm very impressed with what you're doing. Of course, they are made possible thanks to today's sponsor and a sponsor I think you'll get a lot of value out of when you resurface up to the top. What not? So Pokemon Masters, I'm gonna take a guess that you're kind of like me and you love collecting Pokemon cards, right? Or maybe you've got extra Pokemon cards and you're like, yeah, I could turn that into a little bit of uh, change. Whatnot is the live buying and selling platform for collectibles. I've been there and I've done a whole bunch of shows, whether that's with the new sets like Crown Zenith, I'm gonna be doing some coming up for Scarlet and Violet. Uh, there's a lot going on and I have my shows available. I'm ready for you to bookmark right now. But whether you're just looking to get a good deal on some cards and I start most of mine down at just one pound, or maybe you're looking to just make some quick change. I love Whatnot as a way to sell. Listing has never been more easy. It's not like lots of effort to like go on there, list the item, do the the title, the description, to, to put in all of the details. Is it mint? Is it near mint? Will I get in trouble if it's this, this, this? None of that. Instead, you just simply put the title of the card, put in the price that you want to start at, which again, for me, for all my cards are starting at one pound. You go in there and then you just list and people can see in real time exactly what the card looks like, what they're going to get, or you can share with them the joy of opening a pack that they've just bought. That's actually kind of my favorite thing about it is really it's that community element. I've met some really lovely people just through through buying and selling on whatnot and speaking to some of the same people and developing that circle of collectors who are helping me with my collection goals. That binder I just showed you, none of that is for sale. That's my Legends Arceus binder that I'm making and I've been inspired to make that by, yeah, the community over on whatnot. You can download whatnot today using the link at the absolute top of the description or you can scan the QR code on screen. It helps me out. I get kind of an affiliate bonus and you get 10 pounds off of your first order on whatnot. So if you buy something for less than 10 pounds, it's free. <laughs>
So what are you waiting for? Scan the QR code, get some free Pokemon cards today, or of course, click that link at the top of the description. Make sure you've headed over to my account. You've got my next show favorited, and thank you so much to Whatnot for sponsoring this video and this Pokemon Gym. And I'll be back with another Pokemon Gym very, very soon. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, and a special thank you to the big patrons of the month, Jed Rubin, Chamanda Anzibal, Anthony Lee, The Elgator, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you so much.